y'all. How are y'all doing? We are doing wonderful here. So on this episode, I'm going to be making something very frequent request um, among our friends, family, my, my own family. So it's uh, called appam. It's a breakfast item, appam. And I'm going to make it the authentic way. So this is long grain rice, which I soaked for four hours. This is four cups of long grain rice. You could make this in rice flour as well, but there's a little bit of difference when you make it with rice, rice flour. That, and I drained it, ready to go. I'll be using active dry yeast along with some uh, salt, sugar, and of course we will need coconut milk. If you can make coconut milk at home, perfect. If not, this is a good brand to depend on. Um, the other brands that it's, I tried, either it's sweet or it's light, um, the Thai versions of it. This is also Thai, but this is like nice thick consistency of coconut milk. So what we're going to be doing first off is take a glass Pour in one cup of water. This is lukewarm water. And into that we are going to be using about, okay, that's one, tea, one teaspoon. So that's one teaspoon of sugar and one teaspoon of dry active yeast. Okay. Let's give that a good mix. And the reason why I do this first, because we need to get that uh, fermentation started. So I'm just gonna let it sit and get that foam build up. In the meantime, I'm gonna do is get the batter ready. So for that, I'm getting four cups of um, long grain rice, right? So what I'm gonna do is, this is an Indian grinder, a mixy. You could use your blunt deck or a ninja, whatever you have on hand. That's also perfect. So into this, what I'm going to do is, it's all drained. So there shouldn't be much water in it. And I use this um, clear uh, pan for a reason. This is four cups and I had the water level up to here so that it was soaked completely, right? And I drain those excess water out so that you can see how much I usually put the water there for. That's also one of the reason. And I'm just going to pour it in. Oh halfway of this rice okay that's about good so I just filled it halfway into that I'm going to be putting in some coconut milk now you're going to give a good shake get your kids to come and help you if you can do it but kids love to do it mine does so I'm going to just open up a can of coconut milk if you have fresh coconut milk at hand, that's the best. Now when you're using the rice flour, you will also need semolina to get this next uh, process going. So I'm just putting in just enough so that that's about half of the coconut milk in into this. So was, you can see, look at that. Cover our blender and grind it to fine paste. As usual, we need to open up our top and make sure that nothing is sticking away. Give it a good blend. Give it a good mix. I'm going to pour it into another large Pyrex uh, container. If you look at this batter, earlier there was granulate type um, rice on the side, right? Now look at this. This is a smooth batter. There's nothing, it's fine paste. This is the best thing, right? And from this, I'm gonna pour all of this into this Pyrex container. So the second half goes in. We don't want any excess water because that coconut milk is very nice and thick. And after, we are also adding that yeast. So I have my induction cooker ready. The stove is warm. To that, what I'm gonna do is take two ladles full of this first batch that we grind. So that's two ladles full of batter along with some water. Now the reason why we do this is to get that softness 
for our appam. We're also going to flavor this mixture with some sugar and salt. The heat is on very, very low. I'm just going to add some sugar. Now that's also one teaspoon of sugar. If you like more, you could. My kids like more, but I'm just going to add one teaspoon for now and a pinch of salt. Now you don't want to overpower with salt because we're going to be letting this ferment over time. Our batter has come to a nice thick consistency. It's, it has formed that bowl. That's what we were looking for. And now I'm going to let this cool completely before I add it to our second batch of batter that is in the grinder. Um, if you use too much yeast, there will be enough bubbles at the top, but it won't have that nice texture or that feel to the appam as we usually get. So use one teaspoon of yeast with one teaspoon of sugar in lukewarm water. That will be perfect. So let's wait 10 to 15 minutes for this bat um, bowl, the, this thick batter, to cool off. And then I'll show you the rest of the process. All right, so our bowl has like actually cooled off. I have, I'm going to be adding it to our second batch of batter, all of it. Okay, and our yeast is full rice. So add that in. Now let's give it a good mix. Okay, I'm going to mix it along with this one. So you, as you can see, this is a nice, thick, bouncy batter. So at this stage, I'm going to add one more spoon of, one more teaspoon of sugar. Right? That's three teaspoons of sugar that we have added so far. Um, one in the yeast one when we were doing the dough and now so that's three give it a good mix and i'm not adding any salt at this stage because i want that fermentation to happen so we're going to cover this and keep it on a warmer side of your kitchen and um, if you're doing it overnight perfect make sure there's enough space for this batter to rise so our appam has been fermenting for overnight. Another thing is once we mix it, we're going to have to add some salt. Now salt is according to your um, taste. If you want this appam plain with no sugar, you don't have to add any more sugar. But if you like that soft, tangy, sweet appam, you got to add a couple more spoons of sugar and a pinch of salt and keep that aside after adding the salt. Keep it aside for another 10 minutes. Definitely try this, okay? After adding the salt, keep it aside for 10 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna show you two methods how to make this appam. The traditional way, and if in case if you don't have this chatti, this thing called appa chatti, you still can make it up and still enjoy it, right? So this is a Indian pan that you can buy um, online. Uh, it's called Appa Chatti. It's Palapam Chatti. So what I have done that for this is I put the heat on very high. When it comes to screaming hot, I'm going to turn it to medium low. See, that's screaming hot. That's what I wanted to show you. So now I'm going to turn the heat to right in between medium and low. It's not too high, it's not too low. Oh, because the reason why I do that, I want the edges of the appam to be crisp and the middle of the appam to be nice and soft. So that's my trick. And in the same thing, you just won't have that rimness, but that's okay. This flavor, everything is there, right? So this is a nonstick pan, right? A skillet, a small one. and. If you have a big one, you can do doubles, but let's just go with the small one. Same thing. I want the pan to be screaming hot. Once that is ready, reduce your heat to um, medium to medium low, right in between. And you will also need a, 
lid to cover this okay let's wait okay so our temperature for this pan is really nice and hot you here's a tip take a handful of water that evens out the temperature inside the pan so for this appam appa chatti it's been 10 minutes after that salt we added our salt so here's my trick take one ladle full drop it come over pour it in and one more as soon as you have poured in your batter take your chatty and turn it around okay that's what you want the middle bar sh should be something there let's cover this and cook for two minutes same thing on this side what we're going to do is take two ladle full of batter How big do you want it? That's up to you guys. Once that bubbles come around, let's cover this and cook for two minutes. Okay, we are gonna give it a nice flip. It doesn't require any oil or anything because it's a non-stick pan. We're gonna let that cook on the other side for another 30 seconds or so. Okay, it's time to Take it off the stove. That's perfect. If you have chicken curry or egg curry, perfect combination. Okay, if you want to keep going through this, go by all means. And I'm going to show you the other one. See that? Now, for this appam, you do not have to flip it because we cooked it on very medium to low heat, right? And you can see the edges like that's all getting nice and crisp but the middle is nice and soft I'll show you how that is look at that okay um, what I usually do for your catering services it takes so much time to put one ladle in and you know get them better I just pour it into a measuring um, jug and I just pour it out I can eyeball it and say that's two ladles and this is what happens for my girls they want flower up them so there goes one and two right oh, yeah. and three this is being creative way to make sure your kids eat more healthy so that's a flower up them for my girls. We're going to cover this and cook for two to three minutes. All right, so with the quantity that I mentioned above, which is four cups of rice, long grain rice, with one can of coconut milk and one cup of yeast in that mixture, you'll get about 30 appams. So if you're having a big party or something, Go, go for that. Um, 30 appams are the yes size. Now as you can see this is nice. See how soft this is but here it's nice and crispy. I'll show you. Ta -da. See that? Ooh. This is a great combination with chicken stew, egg curry, chickpea curry, either of those. Look at this. It's so soft, yet so full of flavor. Oh, wow.
you got to try this. Seriously. What you got to lose. But so I, I hope you enjoy spending time with me. I sure did. I'd love to hear your feedbacks. Please comment below and um, I'll see you next time. Thanks.